Dr. Jeffrey Saunders. <laughs> he was a professor of kinesiolo kinesiology at the California State University East Bay. Uh, he has degrees in psychology and physical education and a PhD in sports psychology. Dr. Simons has been a university professor at a variety of universities across the US. In addition, Jeff has more than 30 years of experience as a performance psychologist, having worked with athletes and coaches at eight Olympic Games. Um, Dr. Simons co-authored the Blue Earth Approach and Professional Learning Program for the organisation that we now currently uh, deliver in schools. Um, we're really lucky to have I refer to Dr. Simons as Jeff, it's a great mate of mine. <laughs> as Jeff, we really like to have Jeff here um, and to help us better understand the physical activity crisis which is emerging in our schools and, and young people and more importantly to hear about the physical literacy, literacy solution. So without further ado, Jeff Simons. Thank you, Richard. We want to we want to talk about this topic tonight, but I don't want to be deaf by PowerPoint, so I would really like to to try to pull out the gems out of this uh, out of this issue. We are at a time when there's all kinds of news about you know physical activity, physical inactivity, and we want to change some of that focus around to something that's a little more optimistic than just the, the, the dire things. Um, thanks to Blue Earth um, for, for having me out. We, um, um, where did this change up? Um, hold on just a second, Richard. My screen here, I'm not, that's all right, I'll just use what, what's coming up there. We all know that there are a lot of, <laughs> yes, yeah, see, it always changes, so it's always something. Um, there are a lot of issues, and they're across the paper. You've read them, you know about them, some of you uh, may have been involved. There's all kinds of issues about this activity and activity. One of the things that is, is essential to understanding the issue is that humans were meant to move. We are moving, interacting, organic beings. We are not meant to stay in one place. Our, our physical being requires that. And unfortunately, what's happened is that when we become inactive, we see problems with health, you know, and there's lots of physical health things, but also just overall with well-being. When you're not interacting and, and being active, there's all sorts of issues that come up. Um, our modern living has engineered a lot of movement out of our lifestyle. So really, in the last couple hundred years, human beings have gone from having activity as a part of everyday life, they just had to do, you just have to do it, to not really having to move that much. And a lot of the things that we do in modern living really require very little movement, or just a few little fine movements. So we've got this issue and a problem of, that leads to the case where very, very few people are getting even the minimal standards of movement that health professionals say is important. And the and shocking thing, I, I remember my numbers were like 30% of kids uh, are actually physically active. It's dropped to about 20% of kids are actually sufficiently physically active for their own health, growth, development, and certainly for going into the future, which means, of course, 80% are not, uh, which is really scary. Now, with all of that, what we see is, and it's really interesting, I've, I've seen these terrible um, uh, medical reports about how awful it is that the diseases of modern living and um, these dire warnings about we're all gonna die and it doesn't make people move on. It does not change things. Big public awareness campaigns, it doesn't seem to change, it doesn't move the dial. In fact, we just keep becoming less and less active. And so those things haven't, haven't helped. Our, in Australia, our own sporting bodies, health bodies, education bodies have really worked to try to see if sport will be the thing that, that will get kids interested in and moving. And yes, there's a great group of kids who love their sport. We're back to the 70, 80% who really don't do much of that at all. And it does not change, it hasn't raised the activity numbers at all, so we have to change the game. 
have to change the game in some way. We have to think about this differently. If it's essential that our kids are moving, that they're moving not just today but for life, we have to think, what is it that will actually create a better result? And that's where the movement is. Now, we'll keep, our talk, we'll keep bringing our talk to kids and schools, but of course we can probably move this to any, any group, because we're all, any, any, any group of humans, all of us here, all, all the adults here, the same thing. But we're going to talk about schools and maybe where school comes in in terms of actually helping with movement. So we have to ask the question, what is the role of a school in healthy physical activity for kids? Where, where is it, what, to, to what degree is there a role or responsibility for schools? And I don't have the exact answer, of course, but we all have, we have to ask that question. Our kids are in school, our kids are in school to learn things, to develop, to become, <laughs> Uh, hopefully competent, resilient, um, intelligent, <laughs> active adults. So what is the role of the school? And we need to ask the questions, is the role of the school just to provide a dose, which oftentimes is the challenge. They'll say, okay, schools, you're mandated that you have to have so many minutes of physical education, which should equate to a certain number of move, uh, minutes of movement, and therefore, then the kids will be healthy. I'll, I'll tell you that. If, if, if all it was was a matter that the obligation is a dose of exercise, I'll give you the solution. You take 45 minutes out a day and you march the kids. Just march them. You march them around briskly for 45 minutes and they'll get their dose. It's not a particularly great dose, but it, it would do it, right? And what does it teach them? How horrible it is to have to march around the school for 45 minutes. And the principals and teachers say, what a waste of time. We could have been doing something important, mm -hmm. right? So is this about a dose of movement? Or maybe schools could be about developing habits, choices, understanding around movement. Maybe that's what our education system could be about. Is school about teaching some select skills, like how to kick the footy, or how to serve a volleyball, or <laughs> even how to skip or jump? Is it about some set of skills that somebody has to learn in order to be good? Or maybe we're trying to foster this confidence to be a physical person and a curiosity about what could I do? And if I see you doing a new fun thing, maybe I could learn how to do it as well. Maybe that's what we want to do if we're trying to encourage lifelong engagement in activity. We will make the statement <laughs> that say that education, schools, should really be supporting understanding and motivation, those things, the personal things within each individual child that creates that motivation towards engagement in lifelong moving as human beings because that is what we need as moving organic beings. That's probably where we need to be. Now, fortunately, there has been some movement with, at, with the powers that be. And this is, this is kind of the topic of tonight, is to get across some of the new things that are being, are being finally put out as a push towards a change in the way that physical activity happens in schools, in sport clubs, and in um, communities as we go along. There are ways to move forward with this. And the concept revolves around this idea of physical literacy, which is a relatively new term. It's not absolutely new in my field. We've heard about it maybe for the last 20 years, but it's a new term out there coming to the public, the idea of physical literacy. And there actually is an International Physical, Physical Literacy Association. <laughs> Physical literacy is not about a particular skill or a particular fitness level. It's not about how fast you can run or whether or not you can shoot a basketball. It's 
Physical literacy is the motivation and confidence and some physical confidence, that is some ability, some skills, knowledge and understanding to value and take responsibility for engagement in physical activities for life. Wow, that's a whole different idea. Whether you're thinking sport, PE, just recreational activity, exercise, whatever is in your brain, you say, wow, this just takes it and looks at it in a different way. It's about developing a human being who's a moving being. It is not about some specific achievement, such as you will become physical literate when you are in second year two, and then we're done. No, it's not static. And it's not, well, there's a year two level, and there's a year four level, and there's a year eight level. No, it's not static like that. It is a dynamic, evolving capability, a journey for each and every person in just engaging in the physical aspects of living. Okay? So that's the idea. Now, what's great <laughs> for, for in our mind is that Sport Oz has now put out a framework that captures this notion of physical literacy. And you can go to the, um, the um, uh, Sport Oz Gov uh, physical literacy pages and find pages and pages and pages and pages and pages that have been beautifully put together by some really good academics, some good scholars, and some wonderful ideas around this physical literacy. Literacy. They're all part of physical literacy, and they're all physical literacy. They're all part of physical literacy, and they're all things that can be developed through physical literacy. I was talking to Scotty a little, little, little bit earlier, and I said, our area happens to be movement. We could art, or music, or something like that, and say, you know what? You can get a lot of these things, and it's more than one thing. It's a combination of things. Any human endeavor gives you a combination of things that are possible for development. It just happens that physical movement is also an essential part of what we do. So this is the physical literacy, and they've got lists of what they mean by one of these. <coughs> You know, skills and attitudes, interaction with others, all those nice things, cooperation, etc. Person's understanding about why to move and, 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 and how to go about it. So we've got all of these things that now have been set up as a framework for decide for making judgments about what's going on in schools, sporting organizations, etc. With that, let's take a little break and be a little active. And Richard's going to help us out. Well, Thanks, Jim. So to walk the talk, so to speak, we need to, when we're addressing an audience here, we understand that this is a sedentary situation. So I'm going to invite you all just to stand from your hips. So you're standing in a balanced, aligned pose. Let your shoulders be soft. Let your arms be long. Imagine your head is just drifting up into the sky, so there's lots of space between your ears and your shoulders. I want you to just gently breathe through your nose. As you breathe in through your nose, just let your, let your body take in that lovely oxygen, and then as you breathe out, go back to those cues. So nice flat feet, soft shoulders, head floating into the sky, lots of space here. And let's make our face soft. Let's be conscious of that. And just for a couple of seconds, I just want you to softly close your eyes. Continue on that journey in through the nose, and then as you breathe out, soft shoulders, long arms, head drifting up into the sky, long spine, soft face, softly closed lips. Gentle breath through the nose. Beautiful. Now with your eyes still closed, I want you to just take your attention to your feet and notice, are you on the toes of your feet? On the heels of your feet? Maybe one side or the other. Maybe one foot is slightly more grounded than the other. Just notice what's working, what, where your base is for you. And just maybe make some subtle adjustments until you can find a big flat, the best, most stable flat feet that you can possibly get underneath you. The whole of your foot, just holding the, the rest of your frame up. Toes soft, not gripping and then come back to that, the cues I was speaking before, breathing in through your nose, soft shoulders, soft face, 
long spine, nice big, soft, flat feet, holding up all of that. Enjoy the silence. Enjoy the stillness. And then let's just gently let our eyes open. Anyone notice anything while we were going through that little balance and alignment posture, breath? It's more awareness in what we're doing. Lovely, more awareness. So we're being, becoming present, perhaps, is what we're referring to there. So bringing our attention back to the rooms, to ourselves, not being distracted. Lots of distractions in our world always are, but our ability to bring our attention to what we want to bring our attention to is, is really important. And that little simple breath practice can help with that. I'm going to hand you back to Jim. So the amazing thing is that if you were a robot, that would not be true. <laughs> if you were, you know, if you were a rock, that would not be true. But everybody here had an experience. I mean, you did. You think, think about you, and it was your own. And the best experience was the one you had. Not Richard's voice. It's the one you had. There's, it is in our nature to connect to who, to, to where we are and what we are in a physical way. That's our sensory system. That's our movement system. And all of it connects to the way that we perceive, we think, we create, <coughs> we choose, we act. All of those things are connected. We are organic, moving, perceiving, acting beings. That's what we are. And, and the power of something so simple as a little exercise like that, which was not running up a hill, not pushing some weight that you, you know, in order to exercise. It was not, it was not being super accurate with a, with a throw. It was just you being aware of your body. Each and every person, and guess what? You're the only one who experienced what was in your body. That's part of your physical literacy. Everyone, everyone is physically literate. It's just a matter of how much you touch in with it and how much you develop it. The moment you're born and begin to, well, probably before you're born, but at least from the time that you're born and begin to interact with the environment, there is some level of physical literacy because it is the understanding and knowledge of how, where you are in relationship to the environment, where you are within yourself. We all have some level of physical literacy. So, we're not going to talk about, are you literate or not? What we're going to do is say, all humans are. Are you aware of it, and are you working with it? And are there places you want to go with it? It's just a matter of degrees. Now, Sport Oz has that wonderful website, lots of information, lots of categories and things, but they're, and they're wonderful words. What we need to do and what you can do in and around your environment is begin to make, make those words become reality. And this is what Blue Earth has been doing for nearly 20 years now. Um, we uh, saw the value long ago, a lot, you know, not just us, there, there, were, there have been plenty of people, and we have been promoting this concept of physical literacy for a very, very long time and learning how to do it on the ground. And it's things that everybody can do. It's things that teachers, parents can facilitate. While we have incredibly good and skilled coaches, the basis of what we do in Blue Earth is something that everybody can do for themselves and for those around them. And that's what's going to, to develop more and more physical literacy. So, I'm not going to read the words there. The things that we, that we get out of paying attention to movement, setting up movement experiences, 
allow us to understand the moving body better and better. You probably haven't paid attention to your feet in a long time, unless they hurt. But it is really interesting to realize where you put your weight and maybe how that might change your walk. So if we create experiences, we begin to actually explore well, what, what happens with my body. And, and not a judgment of, oh, well, I'm imbalanced or balanced or I'm good or I'm bad. Just what happens? Just awareness. Just understanding and understanding the body still and moving. Attuning to your body and saying, I am the one who's responsible for my, my movement in as much as I control it. My own activity. I'm the person. Awareness of yourself, but then also, and this is big with the kids that we work with, aware of where you are and what you're doing and how that interacts with others around you. So we have all kinds of social connections, right? And we have, you know, um, you know, you, you play games with kids running around, they have to look out for each other. Or they may be doing something cooperative where it only works if they do it together. And they find out what happens when you don't. So being able to be aware of what's happening in active engagement, and that's part of development all the way around. Being accountable for your own striving to another level of skill and your own own well-being, taking care of yourself. Those things are all part of it. A very large part of what we talk about is because we're talking about the individual, and each individual person is the person who basically is in control of what you, they choose and how they act. Intrinsic motivation, fancy, fancy psychological term, lots of research in intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is simply the motivation you have to choose, that you choose for yourself in order to do something. So what we're, what we're looking for in, in physical literacy is a person says, I choose, I want to go out and, and be active. I want it to be, I want to have a healthy, active body. I want to try things out because, because I want to. Because I want to. Not because the doctor said so, not because I have to, but because it's, it's part of my living. And back and always, it's just the best you are. It's the best you. You can't be anybody else. It was the, it was the, um, uh, the, the writer uh, who said, um, be yourself, everybody else is taken. <laughs> it's, it's just, maybe an Oscar Wilde actually. Um, the, the only person that you can be is you, so we are striving to be the best you. You don't have to look at the person next to you. You say, what's the best me as we go along? So that's basically what the Blue Earth Approach is all about. It's taking the, the, the notion of movement, but maybe switching the perspective on what we're doing here. It's not about sport achievement. It's not about physical fitness per se. It's not about, about something that you're trying to prevent a disease per se. It's about exploring and being the physical being that you're supposed to be. Now, we have fabulous, fabulous movement professionals who, who have helped develop this program. So there's all kinds of elements in, in a program, in a good physical activity program that you can explore. Um, coordination, uh, ways of moving around the environment, dealing with the environment. It's not just things that are the most effortful, the hardest to do. It's just moving. Just moving. Now, we have our, our Blue Earth coaches are, 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 are qualified and, and, and amazingly talented at helping with movement situations, but the process is something that's easy and everyone can grab a hold of. The process is simply this idea. It's not about any particular activity. It's more about how do we go about understanding the movement itself. Remember, we're talking about physical literacy here. Building an understanding about yourself moving, understanding how that operates and how that interacts. So, the simple process, and this is, you can take this and try it on yourself any time. You plan to do something, you decide to do something. You act, do it. Experience the action, that is, be aware of the action. Uh, Richard could have just told you, everybody stand up and stand still. And your mind would have been wandering off somewhere, so you, you acted, 
but your mind's wandering off somewhere. So we say, no, when you act, pay attention. So experience, just experience, just right now. That's that, that kind of that, that mindful, that's that mindful awareness. Just experience it. And then we like to put on the reflection. What happened? How did it go? What did happen to you? What did you learn? What do you want to try next time? Because that's the building of, oh, what do, how, how do I want to act the next time? You plan again, and then you act. You experience, and you reflect. You can take anything in your life where you're moving. Think about the next time you're just walking down the street. You know, plan, act, experience, reflect. Plan, act, experience, reflect. You, you'll learn something about your walking. You'll learn something in that moment. Okay. Once again, in our physical literacy, there are certain things that are particularly important if we're going to develop. It's not a particular task. It's not a particular stress on the body. It's not a particular skill. It is being and doing. So our foundational principles, the things that we that we hold true to and that keep our educational process going. And this is what, you know, and teachers tend to understand this, is the very first thing we say, everybody's experience is valid, is valid to them. We have to value that. It is so easy to love the kid who's fast and talented. It's so easy to, to love the kid who's, who's nice and does all the right things. But the truth, but, um, you're only going to touch a small number of kids if they're the ones that you pay attention to in a positive way. We need to, to come in with a understanding and value that everyone's experience is essential to them, and therefore valuable. And that's and movement is for everybody. Movement is for everybody. So we're not talking about the the, the twenty percent that are sporty and great. We're talking about talking about every child and every single one of us. Okay. So that's, that, that's, um, we, we, there, there's no um, uh, compromise on that. The next thing is, the way we're gonna go about this, it's gonna be experiential. Why experiential? Because I can't tell you what you're going to feel, I can't tell you what should happen exactly, we can set up what we plan, but it's gonna be your own Kind of experience. We want it to be learning through the process of doing. These can be simple, simple activities, but they can be very complex and challenging. It doesn't matter. The main thing is, is we want to make it fun to be there, enjoyable, engaging, and the whole point is the process. So anything that you might do with children that involves physical activity, watch for the process. What are they doing? Encourage them to try things. It's, 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 not, it's not how it comes out, it's the most important, it's the process of doing, because that's what teaches the lessons. You can, you can have a great time talking about what happened as an outcome, that's a reflection. But the process is the only time that you do it, that's what you really learn from. Next foundational thing, challenge people where they are. If you can jump high, I'll, I'll set up a challenge that you have to jump high. If you can't, I'll set up a challenge that stretches you. We'll get the appropriate challenge, but I'll not just challenge physically. You know, we challenge a little bit socially, psychologically, a little emotionally, you know, deal with loss. You know, we had a little competition game and some people lost. How do we deal with that? Because that's a challenge. All of the issues we have around in schools around resilience, I, I would say dealing with loss is probably the first thing that has to be learned in order to be resilient. We can play with that in a fun way with physical activity. So the challenges are always about for development, not because we have some sort of standard you have to go after. So that's that's really important as a basis. And then we want to be building this intrinsic um, enjoyment and therefore intrinsic motivation for the physical activity itself. And why? Because children who are intrinsically motivated to be active will be active the next time they get a choice. And then if they do it again, they'll choose it again. And then as they grow up to be young adults, they're gonna choose activity. I mean, they go in, you know, throughout their life, they'll know that they are a physical person 
and they can choose a physical activity. We know that when it comes from within the person, that it just or you know organically perpetuates itself. It's our best, it's it's our best way of fostering a change in the way that people address physical activity. And unfortunately, we as we said in the beginning, our physical activity is now a choice in many ways. What we want to do is get, get it away from being a chore, <laughs> an awful thing that, that you have to push yourself to exercise, and more and more make it something, well, I'm just finding things in my life where I can be active. So what you'll notice here in the principles, there's not one thing there about something a child has to achieve relative to some standard or to somebody else. It's just moving through a process of taking on physical activity as part of who they are and what they want to do in the future. All can work with that. Within our active school programs, and again, it's the, 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 the power in this is not just a physical activity session, it's not just the dose, it's not just the fun experience, but what we push is that, the, the, that there is an active community within the school. That the, we, we create a school environment where activity is just part of what we do. It's the way that we understand uh, the living around the school. And it becomes something that's part of the communication, part of the connectedness of those school communities. That's, and a lot of that is social. A lot of that social and emotional connectedness as you go along. So what can parents do? What can schools do? One of the things that, that is clearly um, stated within the physical literacy uh, documentation is that we can't expect that individual children will develop on their own. That it just happens despite us although you know, many people do. But we need to create the environments where it's easy, where that's natural, where the physical environment promotes movement, activity, that the social environment, the way that we value movement, promotes it, accepts it, encourages it, makes it part of it. That there's a culture of, of moving, just like a culture of thinking and a culture of being being kind to one another. Those things, those are the cultures we're trying to create within the school. And then institutionally, within the schools, you have to design the structure of the program so that it's easy for people to be active. Maybe that means there have to be active break times. It may mean that you get standing desks or, or different kinds of furniture in your classrooms. It may mean that you do different kinds of things that encourage people to interact in certain ways. When we create those structures, then it's very, very easy for kids to become part of that, that, that culture. And then they'll see it as, as normal and the way that it goes. So there's some really nice things about creating an environment. So you think about how do we make it easy? Because you know in your life you would love it if it was easy for you to be physically active. How can we make it easy for them? The literature, the, the research shows us really clearly that more physical activity during the day does not take away from learning. It does the opposite. Kids who are able to either let off some steam or do something that's physically engaging, they, they, they concentrate better, they share better, they learn more. We have evidence from our own programs, better net plan scores in schools with kids who are more actively engaged in physical activity. Yes, oh, it wasted time during the day. And then you get better scores. Well, it can't be that much of a waste. And then for the way the kids view themselves and what they're going to choose in the future changes. We create the environments. So one of the difficulties, of course, that we have is that I'm talking these, you know, I, I, we, we can talk in these very abstract and lovely terms about, you know, development of the individual, accepting each other, everybody's on their own path, and there's all this wonderful stuff. And then when it comes around to schools and government programs, the problem is, is how are we going to evaluate this? How do we know if somebody is doing better in their physical literacy? 
Like, you know. I mean, because if you're going to give time to it, you better be able to justify that time and make sure that it's there. And I'll tell you, nobody quite knows yet. But the, you know what the great thing is? There's some really good things and people arguing about how you do it. And the number one thing they'll say is you can't do it by deciding how quickly, how fast they can run 1,500 meters or 40 meters or how high they can jump or how well they can balance or, or kick a footing. Absolutely no way that you can take some standard, some, some individual thing, and, and decide who's becoming physically literate. That, that doesn't work. So what we need to think about is more along the lines of just touch points. Okay? We can only chart the progress. In fact, the, 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 the latest strong paper that came out from the physical literacy people said, let's not talk about measurement and evaluation. Let's talk about charting progress. So, because physical literacy is a process. So all we can do is say, let's chart progress. And your progress, your progress, your progress, your progress. We've got to find ways that we're kind of watching and paying attention to how each person is progressing, what's happening for them. So we can only ch chart the progress as we go along. And there are things that you can look for. There are things we look for to see whether or not we're being effective. If kids are engaged, they're participating, they're absorbed, they're acting, we know we're winning. If they're enjoying what they do, we know we're winning. If they're interested and ask to do it again, if they show up, some of our Aboriginal schools, the kids show up on the day that the Blue Earth Coach is there. They don't show up on other days, but then they show up on that day. Why? Because they're interested and they're having fun and they want to interact with somebody who appreciates them doing what they do. So if you see those things, if you start hearing a different way of expressing perspectives and understandings around skill, ability, um, health, fitness, movement, that's what we're looking for. Are we getting a different way that, that, that's, that children are expressing themselves? And the, school, the, the adults around the school as well. Do we see positive personal behavior, social behaviors? We have amazing stories of, of, of how cooperation changes within a school when you do activities that require both competition and cooperation. Because the exercise of doing those things changes the way that children are, are going to process information and they bring it to the classroom. So if you see changes in behavior, you know, and you, and you see you know, both personal and so, social behaviors, you know that we're making a difference. We want to look to see whether children start to enjoy being physically active, feel like they're a physically active person, and have some physical competence and confidence in their own abilities. As soon as we can release a child from the expectation they're supposed to be like the best in class or be amazing compared to everybody else, as soon as we release them from that, they begin to express who they are, they become confident in that. That is a touch point. They're changing the way that they perceive themselves when they're in these physical activities. We're being successful. So the challenge that I put out to you, first of all, this tremendous amount you can read about the physical literacy and it's all about, um, um, it's all evolving. The challenge I put out is can you begin to think about physical activity promotion in maybe a little bit different way than we have in the past? It's not about passing the PE class. It's not about making the sport team. It's not about becoming the most skilled person in the world, even though maybe that eventually is what you do. It's about engaging as a physically active person, which is who you are as a human being, and finding your own path forward. That's where we all as a culture need to change our perspective. And then I believe, I, I just absolutely have faith that we will start to see differences in those outcomes that <coughs> people and the epidemiologists look at. Hopefully, there's a little something in there you can take with you. Um, we'd love to do a lot more talks and things on specific topics and issues. 
Um, but if it lit up a little something for you, I, that's satisfying to, to all of us. So I'll open up now if you have any questions, and we'll see if we have any answers. <laughs>